hi, hi, and welcome to Roulette's Play Higarashi When They Cry. Now, because I have a thousand subscribers, I wanted to do something special. Uh, when I do subscriber milestones, I usually release a video called Roulette's Play in 10. With Higarashi, I'm going to also do a giveaway. It's three bundles that I'm going to be giving away in celebration of my 1,000 subscribers. Plus, you'll get that Roulette's Play in 10 coming up. It's going to be Enigma, which is 22 episodes long, and it's going to be a lot of work. If you want to participate in the giveaway, leave a comment below. And in a week, I will take all the comments on this first video, and I'll do a drawing, essentially. Okay? All right. Let's get started. Don't be sad. The world may not forgive you, but I do. Don't be sad. You may not forgive the world, but I forgive you. Tell me, what must I do to earn your forgiveness? Federica Berncastel. Wow, that was perfectly timed to the f f This is a work of fiction. Anything that, you know, seems true, coincidental. 80, 1983, the early summer of the 58th year of the... I didn't get to finish it, sorry. I think it said Showa era. If I was going to be ripped apart anyways, having my body ripped apart would have been far better. I trusted her. No, I still trust her. Even in this very moment, I trust her. But... I'm starting to realize I only wanted to trust her because I refused to accept the truth. It was as if I was trying to convince myself in such a silly sobbing voice and those tears, those tears making a mess of my face, that mechanical repetitious sound finally stilled and everything fell silent. Only the cry of the cicadas remained annoyingly loud and yet I felt as if I could still hear her voice. But that's not possible. She's no longer speaking. Do we just kill someone? The only one crying is me. She never cried. And the cicadas? The cicadas are crying too. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion, because there was none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I shouldn't need to shed any for her. Then why? This pain, my eyes getting moist, why was this happening? I still wanted to believe I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit had suffered enough. And countless times, I'd waved over whether I should just throw the battered thing away. Except, I've stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? I'd feel better if I just threw it away. Even knowing that, I choose to believe, didn't I? I chose to believe, sorry. Only I can understand that painful struggle and appreciate it. Hey, me? I've tried more than enough. I'll acknowledge that much. So, isn't it all right to just take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind with her. Like flowers by a grave. Now then, calm your nerves. Even though you can't feel your right arm, just lift it up. And with every swing, forget a little more. That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. I liked petting your head. I loved how demure you were. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my first and last bouquet for you. Alright, so I'm guessing we just mutilated the shit out of a body. Perhaps I really did love you. 
Higurashi, when they cry. Somebody has been apologizing for a while now. Okay, uh, let's do a quick save. I wonder what she's apologizing for. It felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I last went to the city. I only returned to attend the funeral of a relative. Even though I'd lived there until last month, I found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. Those skyscrapers and multi-lane roads, the melodious cacophony of the sidewalk. Even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of locusts and the babbling of bricks, and the cry of the higurashi, the evening cicadas. Rather than making me feel lonely, that quietness has begun to instill a sense of serenity. There's nothing where I'm living now. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints. There aren't even vending machines. No music stores, no restaurants, and no arcades. Oh my god, the blasphemy! <laughs> even an ice cream parlor would be unlikely. The nearest town has some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. That sounds like a nice ride, though. But come to think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores, arcades, and ice cream parlors, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I'd lived in the city for ten years and never once been into an ice cream parlor. What? <laughs> I should have gone at least once. Yeah, you should have. It's only now that I'm starting to regret that a little. Everyone should go to an ice cream parlor at least once. <laughs> Somebody is still apologizing. Who is she apologizing to? She's apologized so much, so just forgive her already. There's no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a bit annoyed at whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. I think murder might be a little hard to forgive. There's no such thing as an irreparable mistake. You just need to be more careful next time. She's still apologizing, even now. Then, has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done. But if it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Hey, you. The one she's apologizing to. Why don't you just go ahead and forgive her? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice. Keiichi, we're almost there. Wake up. It seemed the train had reached its final stop. We'd spent hours riding everything from the bullet train to the local routes. It was hard to believe the landscape beyond the window in the city I was in half a day ago were in the same country. No, that they were even from the same era. From there, we'd take a car deeper into the mountains. Past where the dense forest encroached on the mountain roads suddenly opened up. There, where I live now. Hinamizawa. In case you were forgetting what game we were playing. It's Higurashi when, we, when they cry. <laughs> Even though we were approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Although in exchange, you could fill your lungs up with crisp, clean air. Flipping open the window, I was greeted with a verdant expanse. Nothing but trees. 
The neighboring house was far away from the other side, so I was probably the only one enjoying that view in the air. I filled my lungs with another deep breath. Since I started living in Hinamizawa, I learned that even air has its own taste. I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. My mother was the only one there. My father, nowhere to be seen. He was probably up working until the early morning. Dad had a rather unconventional job as a painter. It's such a laid-back profession. Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I was so jealous of that easygoing lifestyle. I even wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. It was just because it looked easy. I'd never tell him that, though. Mom laid breakfast out on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. My mom was such a good cook, it was scary. Actually, it looks like your mom cooked nothing but the salmon. Just saying. <laughs> a perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Unlike my dad, who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule, my mom never squandered any time or effort. She hummed a little tune as she brought over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in a good mood today. I'm so happy you've been waking up early since we moved here, Keiichi. If I don't wake up early, I won't have time to eat breakfast. I thought I was being cute, responding with a wisecrack after being praised for being good. Full bowl of rice, or will half be enough? Pile it on! First, I savored the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. After that, I covered it with the egg. Between bites of rice, I enjoyed the crunch of the pickles. Not bad at all. Excellent as usual. Watching me clean my plate, Mom gave me a warm smile. I'm so happy you haven't skipped breakfast ever since we moved here, Keiichi. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right until the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. Boycotting the breakfast Mom made me each morning, that was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend cram school. I guess that's what you'd call my rebellious phrase. Oh, that rebel! <laughs> I wouldn't so much as look at the breakfast she woke up early every day to make. If I could go back in time, I'd slap myself. Mindful of the time, Mom rushed me along with a wide grin. Is it about time to meet up with Reina-chan? Hurry, hurry! Mom really seemed to enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Dana is one of my classmates. She really loves looking after people, coming to meet me every day without fail. The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to school with a girl was just lame. But, well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate. Seriously though, how long does Reina wait there for me every morning? Taking one last gulp of miso soup, I raced for the door. God, this is just making me want miso soup. <laughs> Please thank Reina-chan for the pickles. Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store-bought, were they? If I'd have known that, I would have savored them a bit more. Morning! Keiichi-kun? Good morning! Her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. You're always so early. You should try sleeping in sometime. If I sleep in, I'll keep you waiting. She's so conscientious and such a good person. I fucking hate her. No, <laughs> if that ever happens, I'll just leave you behind. Keiichi-kun, you're so cold. I wait for you all the time. I'll leave you in the dust without looking back. Why are you so mean? Why? Reina had a slightly troubled look on her face. Toying with her was rather fun because of how quickly her mood changed. I'm kidding. I'd wait for you. With those words, Irena seemed to relax. 
Her face flushed bright red. Actually, that's kind of how she looked when she showed up. Ah, thank you. I'd wait forever until you came, Reyna. No matter how long. Ah, uh, forever? Reyna turned bright red, steam rising from her head as her brain short-circuited. Then we had to buy a new one. <laughs> She's especially weak to this sort of talk. It's quite rare to find someone this fun to tease. Have you ever read a romance novel, Reyna? Huh? I, I, I haven't never read any before. From that response, I gather she was interested in them, but too embarrassed to actually buy one. I couldn't imagine what would happen if she did read one. She'd probably turn red and pass out. That seems like a scientific response. Yeah, that's a good analysis. Oh yeah, a uh, message for mom. She says thanks for the pickles. Uh, it was nothing. You're welcome. How were they? Not too salty? They weren't that salty. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. It would have been fine to just be honest and say they were good, but apparently I couldn't be that forthright. I'd like to ask something before that. Were you the one who pickled them, Reyna? Or was it your mom? Uh huh? Uh, why do you ask? W were they too salty? Her attitude completely changed as she began to panic frantically. Was it you, Reyna? Or was it your mom? Why are you asking who made them? Why? Well, depending on the who made them, my opinion of them might change drastically. Uh, uh huh? She counted frantically on her finger, trying to remember the amount of salt she used to pickle them. It wasn't like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't stop myself. Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. Reyna nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster a response. It, it was me? Delicious. Huh? Pretty good, just like the last ones. They went perfectly with the rice. Her face went bright red again. She was completely spacing out. It truly was a lot of fun to tease her. I pray that Reyna never gets taken advantage of by some lowlife. Keep at it, Reyna. I'll train you until you handle it like an average person. Or so I decided for myself. Let's go. If we keep me on waiting, we'll never hear the end of it. Seeing as she just kept spacing out otherwise, I called Reyna back to reality so we could make our way to school. This strange, easily flustered girl is Reyna Ryugu. I've only known her for about a month, but I've come to realize it's not just her name that's strange. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. Didn't get to any decisions yet, sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy it. Remember, leave a comment below if you want to participate in this giveaway. And thanks for subscribing. Thank you for watching. And thank you for all your feedback to help me grow. I really appreciate it. Alright. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> this is my metal voice. Take a grenade. <laughs> I I am so not metal. <laughs>